Hi everybody, Russ here. I wanted to start this video where I've been shooting these uh, last few so you could see what's going on with the smoke. Um, I don't know if the sun actually went down, but you could stare right at it all day. Pretty depressing here. Very smoky. Um, everything smells like smoke. Your clothes, your hair. Uh, thank goodness we have air conditioning so we can seal our house up. I don't know how it works for those that don't. I guess they just live with it. But uh, I'm going to take you around Colville and Kettle Falls. Hopefully swing by the fire camp to show you Know, how many people are there? Um, you know, I don't want to call into question firefighters, but I want to call into question the way that we're doing some of these things. I hear lots of stories about um, people going to fight the fire and they get their equipment certified and then they're just told to stand by and sit there and be parked and and you know the federal government's paying them thousands of dollars a day to do that and they don't actually do any work fighting the fires there are those that are doing work out there and the airdrops help but there's also a lot of people out there that I think we all need to question are they really getting the fire out what's the real motivation um, anyway it's a touchy subject uh, I don't pretend to know all the answers, but I do know with the exposure that I have to some of these things that it's not quite right. And anyway, well, I'll show you around what the smoke situation's like here in Northeast Washington. And I, I've been watching all around. It, it's like this in a lot of places. So we'll go check some things out. I just pulled into Kettle Falls, Washington here. We're at the Kettle Falls Middle School. This is where the fire camp is uh, for the, uh, I believe it's the Boyd's Fire is what it's being called. And I just, I drove by it earlier today and I thought uh, it'd be good for people to see a little bit about what's going on here. There's all kinds of different fire forces here from different uh, counties and uh, in cities and states for that matter. I've been seeing some of the, uh, the fire crews. I saw one that was a Mescalero, which I think is Arizona, and a few others, but there's a lot going on here. I mean, there's just stuff everywhere. There's normally nothing here, and they're just fire trucks and everything all over the place. I don't know how many of these folks are out there working. I don't know what they're all doing. There's a lot of equipment sitting around. Um, but there's a whole lot of personnel. You can see all the tents here behind me. I'll walk around and we'll capture some uh, images and video of what uh, what's here and see if we can find anything out. You saw the map there that we just uh, looked at on the wall. This is the Boyd's Fire. Um, I guess the business to be in here would be tent sales, but <laughs> this is uh, where everybody's staying during the fire. I don't uh, envy them because they have to sit out here in all the smoke. Probably uh, very difficult to escape. Uh, but the massive scale of this brings into things a lot into question. But 
I don't question the guys out here working, the gals out here working. They're putting in their time and they're doing a lot of things and they're putting up with difficult conditions. But there's just a lot of resources out here. And I think we should be asking ourselves, are they being put to the best use? That's what we don't know. And so it's kind of like once there's fire, it's just all hands on deck and we just create the biggest fire camps we can get organized and then I just don't know who's watching who's who's looking over it um, certainly it hasn't been effective due to the smoke but I don't know there's a lot of disgruntled people in our community um, especially the ones that go to sign up for the fire very little's happening in their opinion so Anyway, we'll show a few more shots. I'd like to go down the Columbia River. You can see on the map there that the fire's right along the river and uh, you can't see across it right now. So I made it down to the banks of the Columbia River here. You can see behind me, this is the, uh, the 390, Highway 395 bridge that takes you from Stevens County to Ferry County. You can barely see the other side. Believe it or not, this, uh, this is an improvement to earlier today. Um, my family and I and a bunch of friends were out on the river and uh, we had to cut it short today because this was just unbearable. I mean, it it's, doesn't smell good. Um, your eyes are burning. You, you know, and <clears throat> there was a study done by Georgia Tech, I think it was last year or the year before, about this wildfire smoke and how bad it is for you. So I don't even know what's happening to me and my lungs and what kind of things I'm being um, exposed to. Right up here, that's the, uh, the start of the Boyd's fire. Apparently that one was started by a down power line, uh, by a tree blowing over a power line. And I know it may seem funny to criticize firefighting, but I want to be clear, I'm not criticizing firefighting, I'm criticizing the, potentially criticizing the strategy and execution um, I talk to people who have fought fires for years and they just say we fight fires so differently now um, and they don't say it for the better. We certainly spend more money on these fires. So I think it's important that we question this stuff. And here's the other thing that struck me while I was at the fire camp there. We get a fire, it's all hands on deck. But we build the fire danger in our forests and it's, and there's no urgency. We're not talking about getting out there and thinning acres the same way we're talking about getting out there and building an incident team to go out on a fire. And I guess that's what's the most frustrating is we need to fight the fire 12 months out of the year. And that means removing the fuel the other months. So we don't have to put up with this. I mean, I know this is, we're just in Northeast Washington, you know, the, to some people it's no big deal. But I tell you what, people in Seattle, I saw some pictures today from, from Kirkland. Um, you can barely see across Lake Washington. There's the stuff going on in California. I know it's going on in Idaho and Montana and many other places and many other states are dealing with the smoke from here so I know we can do better and we should do better and I think we should challenge ourselves on all of these fronts how are we fighting the fire the costs that we're incurring while doing it how are we using our resources are the right people in charge 
You know, I, I personally believe that maybe we should invest money in the local county fire districts. And they're the ones that know the area the best and how to teach them how to deploy resources and call resources in from outside. That's an idea I would like to see explored more because I think people know that are here, that here is relative, but they know the landscape and they know how to, they know how to fight the fires in their areas. And I'd like to give them that chance and expend resources in that manner. A lot of these firefighters are from all over the country and I appreciate them coming out and working hard and putting up with these crappy conditions with the rest of us. But we also need to focus on providing a landscape where we can actually fight the fire. Because some of these areas, I mean, part of this fire, I, I, it's, I've seen it, it's been treated and it's been logged in certain areas and the fire there cranks out smoke but doesn't kill the trees and that should be our desired condition especially in the wildland urban interface if we're going to have a fire um, but other areas up above here uh, we've been working on it with the forest service uh, we are northeast washington forestry coalition Vaughan brothers um, i think uh, boise cascade has been involved in some of these projects columbia cedar and so some of these areas have forest restoration work already done, so they're performing much better. The firefighters can actually fight the fire. But up above there where we haven't got to yet, it's gonna be very difficult to put out. So I hope if you're not in an area with smoke like this, um, that you appreciate it. Because I'll tell you, when your clean air is taken away, and you get a day to go out with your family and you're not able to do that, that's frustrating. And you'd hope that everybody's doing their part to help this to come to an end. But unfortunately, I think this is gonna be the status quo for some time. If we put the resources to it, I think we could turn the tide in probably 10 years. I mean, forests are massive and it's gonna take a long time to solve a problem that we created over 30 years. So, anyway everybody, thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. And if you have air like this, I hope it clears up soon. Take care.